Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to turn to your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We hear this scripture, we read this scripture, we memorize this scripture, but you know, it, it does us good to keep going back over and over and over. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. But before we read it, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna lay a foundation here. I'm gonna talk to you about the part partakers of God's kingdom. You and I, Again, last week, we celebrated what again? Resurrection. Resurrection. Come on. How about everybody? What do we celebrate? Resurrection. The resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus. Now, Jesus paid a price for us that we can be, become partakers of his kingdom. God took us out of the kingdom of this age, in this kingdom of this age that has sicknesses and diseases and depression and oppression and every negative thing that you can think of that's happening on this earth happens in this kingdom here because it is a fallen kingdom. We come from a fallen nature. And God, it's gotten worse as time has gone. But God has called us out of to bring us into. God called Israel, the Jews, out of bondage to bring them into the promised land that took them, that would have taken probably 11 days. But it took 40 years because of their resistance of wanting to go back, of not wanting to change, of not wanting to do what Moses did to come and have relationship with the Father. We had those same Christians today. We look at the historical event that took place with Egypt and the bondages that Israel experienced. But yet we don't look at it as, as, as an example, as the Bible says. It is our example to see of what not to do. But yet we do it because man does not learn from his past. Man repeats history. History repeats itself over and over and over again. If you would go and read in the Old Testament, especially even in the book of Judges, you will find America there. Getting up, falling down, getting up, falling down, getting up. And, and then it said, and they were people as, this is what they were known for. They did it according to the dictates of their own heart, their own wicked heart. They had no standard. Their standard was their own heart. And the Bible tells us that the heart of man is desperately wicked. That's the fallen nature. That's what comes to, from the kingdom of this age. Who, I'm praying, I'll paint this picture for us so we can wake up. Who is the prince over this kingdom of this age? Who is the prince? Satan. Satan. Ephesians 2 says it. That Satan is prince of the power of the air. That's the reason why people will ask this question. They will say, well, why does God allow, why does God allow abuses to take place? People, we have all kinds, children that are being abused. Human traffickers, people, women that are being abused. There's all kinds of abuses going on right now behind closed doors. Some of you experienced it. You say, well, why would God allow these things to happen? It's because it comes from this kingdom who the person is in charge of it, and that's the prince of the power of the air, the devil. 
Now, if we stop there, it looks like it's hopeless. All we can do is try to endure. Well, Jesus, or God, sent Jesus as a man to pay the price for humanity of the fallen nature to give him a new nature. As a matter of fact, he brought and restored the nature that man was created from the beginning. Made in the image of God. Adam had such relationship. Every part of his brain was used up. And now we only have barely a fraction of our brain. Even Einstein used. The most, most intelligent person used. Where is all the rest of it? That's how far we have fallen. And continue to fall. You read it in the news. You look at it on television. It, I don't like to look at it. I, I'll see one, maybe a few minutes of it. After that, I'm done. Tell you why. No matter what kind of words you hear, faith comes by hearing. And hearing, and hearing, and hearing. Okay. So, if you have negativity and you keep hearing it over and over and over again, guess what it does to your belief system? You believe it. Now the newscasters become the prophets of the land. They are not. But that's the way America looks at them, as the prophets of the land. So they look at CNN, ABC, C CBS. We look at that and we say, oh, look what's going on. And we believe it. When you can look at 90, probably about 95% of it is lies. And it attacks certain leaders that they don't want in place. And he put all these lies up there. And we believe them. We believe them. Maybe the closest it could be, maybe Fox News. But you know what? They still put out there. Not good. What, you know what? Then what can we listen to? I'm glad you ask. Why do you think... God has called us out of this kingdom to make a difference in this kingdom. In order to make a difference in this kingdom, it's not going to come, like I said earlier, by putting signs up and, and, and you know, like some Christians have done it, and now we're called haters. Uh, put signs up and says, oh, God hates fags. Really? Where does it say that? Never said that. How about God hates adulterers? God hates fornicators? No, 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 no. He hates the act of fornication. He hates the act of homosexuality. He hates the act of adultery. He says, but not the persons. For God so loved the world that he gave. See, so we don't go in natural means to fight against it. Because my Bible tells me this. We fight not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. So how are we going to attack these things? How are we going to attack addictions on people? Are we going to look at it and say, oh, there's no hope. Once an addict, always an addict. That's why I talk there at the mission. No, you've heard that before, but the reason why you've heard it and believed it, because you've heard it over and over and over again, so, oh, well, I'm always going to struggle with it. I'm trying to run, but it's right at my heels. Yeah, yeah. Now, God didn't tell us that we are to hang on. Do the best you can and hang on. You hang on. You're going to let go. Because our hanging on is done in the natural and we are going to quit. God very well knew that we could not do it alone. But yet Christians still try to do things alone. And wondering, how come it's not working? 
because you're doing it alone and when you're doing it alone you're doing it in the natural and the natural is this kingdom here the kingdom of this age who's the prince of the power of the air and he's laughing at you well I hate that guy I wish I could you know, well, you're not going to do it until you respond to the, what the crucifixion brought and the resurrection brought, brought life back to us. And Jesus said it. Jesus said here. He goes, now before he left, after the resurrection, he goes, now I'm giving you the keys. Now, here it is. Whatever you bind on earth, I'll be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I'll be loose in heaven. That's authority. I'm going to speak on that one day. A series on that. Authority. You have no idea what kind of authority we've got. If you knew the authority that we have, you'd always be happy, excited, filled with joy. And I'm not talking about that when you go through things, you can feel some kind of, you know, some kind of struggles and stuff. Yeah, you're going to go through the struggles, but you're going to go through them above, not beneath. You're going to go through the victory. See, because we're still carrying this flesh. And the flesh does feel, it feels a lot of things of this kingdom, but it's not supposed to be led by this kingdom. It's, we're supposed to be led by our spirit. See, our spirit it supersedes the things of the flesh. When God created man, he created man spirit being. I'm going to hit this hard spirit being then why in the heck do we go back to live in the natural and try to fight in the natural when the Bible says we fight not against flesh and blood and then we go and we ask for prayer we ask for prayer and let me tell you I don't care how much prayer you receive you're not going to get it why because you're choosing to live in the natural and see, God has given us, watch how it said, power of choice. You have the authority to walk in righteousness or to walk in sin. You have that authority. Amen. Devil's not the problem. He will accommodate. If you choose to walk in sin, he'll accommodate you. He'll show you how to live in sin. But what's attached with sin is this. Oppression and depression and giving up. And the only way out is not having hands laid on you and casting those de demonic spirits that are oppressing you and all. Because you'll go, if you don't have a change of heart, you'll go right out these doors and invite her right back in again. There has to be a change of heart. That is what God is after. Just to come and you get saved. That's not the big thing. That is the exciting thing. Praise God, all heaven rejoices. But the thing is, now it's time to grow up. Now it's time to find out, what do I got? What did, God, what did salvation release to me? What did it give me? I mean, according to the scripture, here, here's, here's the prophet that we have to listen to right here. The prophecy of the word, not the prophets on television, the prophets of the word of God. Amen. That's what we got to be attentive here. This is where it comes in. If we're born again of the spirit, then we need to live in the spirit. We cannot, now, God has given us the privilege, the privilege. I count it a privilege, I count it an honor. And I think you and I need to slap ourselves, wake up and appreciate the salvation that Jesus received, re released to us through the resurrection. We need to be excited about it. What is wrong with us when we get, when we get depressed? And, and we get discouraged. What's wrong with us? Jesus did everything. Right. The only reason why we're that way is because we choose to be that way. Yes. It's not God's choice. 
God doesn't want us there. But the choice that you make, guess what? There are fruit that's attached to that, what you, of the choice that you've made. There's a fruit of corruption or there's a fruit of life. Amen. Bible says, whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. If you sow disobedience, you're going to reap corruption. But if you sow obedience, you're going to reap life. Amen. Now, what is hard on that? What, what, what's so hard? We have a choice. Life, death. There ain't no between. No choice, you've made one already. Death. Am I getting through? No choice is a choice of death. Because the choice that needs to be made on purpose has got to come from the heart, not from our, not just from our head. It's got to come from a heart. Because God's not after our head. He's after our heart. We're responsible with what we allow to come in our heads. Which the Bible calls it the renewing of the mind. By putting in the prophetic of the word of God and renewing it. You know why it has to be renewed? Because our finite minds can only take so much. It is so limited. And, and so therefore we believe God based upon our limitations. So God will do this, but God won't do that. God will do this, but he won't do that. He'll heal this, but he won't heal that. You know, wait a minute. Either God is God or he's not. The only reason why, again, I say this. The reason why we have denominational barriers today is because we have different beliefs. And the beliefs are, have been placed upon God of his limitations. The last time I, I read and studied God's word, which is all the time, reading his word, is that I find that he's bigger than our heads. Turn to somebody and say, God's bigger than your head. So this is the reason why we need to get our minds renewed. It's going to take line upon line. It's going to have you coming, coming to church every week, hearing the word, hearing the word, hearing the word. Because hearing the word brings faith. Because if you don't hear the word to bring faith, you're going to hear something else that will bring death. Either way, it's your choice. If you don't like the position that you're in today, then you can change it. You can change it. Again, we could pray and pray and pray and pray and nothing changes until you change. Amen. <laughs> God has given us the opportunity to become a partaker. Now stop and think. A partaker of his kingdom. Of his kingdom. The God of the universe loves us so much that he gave us the kingdom. The Bible says it is your father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. Pleasures, he's delighted. I'm excited. You came into his kingdom not too long ago, a few months ago. You came to his kingdom. I mean, God is just excited. I mean, he's just he, he's just bouncing. Wow, what, you, you're, you're, that's not true. Yeah, it is true. You read your Bible, Habakkuk says that he, he, he's delighting over us with singing. He rejoices. So think about it. You can't have a bad thought. You can't have what he called this uh, depressive, uh, depressive thinking. If you're thinking about, oh man, I don't care. When you're going through it, that's the time to do it. When you're going through it, not when throwing everything's hunky dory. But when you're going through it, when you're going through it, it's like, man, just ponder it, renew your mind with it, remind yourself. You're not reminding God. You're reminding yourself. God, you delight over me with singing. What am I upset about? What am I depressed about? You, you delight over me with singing. I get the Bible. Read it. It's on there. The last chapter. 
Habakkuk, you delight, I think it's Habakkuk, you delight over me, if not Zephaniah, one of those. Is it Zephaniah? Zephaniah, that's the one. Zephaniah. You know, have you ever been to Zephaniah? Have you ever seen Zephaniah? Have you read Zephaniah? Anybody here? Yeah. <laughs> you need to get your Bible, read it. Zephaniah, it's in the Bible. It's a short chapter. But, uh, what is it, one, two chapters, three chapters, something like that? Three chapters, the last chapter there. He, he, he delights over us. He rejoices over us with singing. Man, that means this. If you want to put reasoning, put this kind of reasoning. God's rejoicing over me. He's excited over me. And he delights over me. I'm getting excited just talking about it right now. Man, he delights over me. He is well pleased with me. Man, he's so much in love with me. Oh my God. Ha! Thank you, Jesus. And then a heart of thanksgiving comes out of your heart. How am I going to stay depressed? You can't stay depressed. It tears it down. Because what the Bible says is when, pray, when we praise Him, He stills the avenger. God gets involved because my praise is an act of my faith of what He says. Amen. He delights over me, so I'm acting out in faith. Lord, I'm rejoicing over you too, Lord. You rejoice over me, I'm going to rejoice over you. It's an act of my faith. When you act on your faith, God steals the avenger. It's like, it's like God saying, uh-uh, you stop right there. Look what he's doing. He's activating my word. And you know what my word is. You have to, I, I back up my word. I'm faithful. God's faithful to his word. He backs it up. And the devil has to back down. Amen. That's the authority that we got. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. I get to partake of that kingdom. See, when I'm acting that way, I am acting out of not this kingdom, that's depressing. That's what's attacking me. I'm acting out in God's kingdom. God's kingdom. See, because my God withholds no good thing to those that will walk uprightly who choose to walk in obedience. See, the life of a Christian is obedience. Has to be. When there is not obedience and you know to do it but don't do it, the Bible says in Hebrews, it becomes sin. And sin is a separation from relationship with God. And that means this. It means that if you stay there, you become, you start sinning and sinning. Because if you sin in one thing, you're going to sin in another thing. It's going to keep on going. Rampant. Now, the Bible does say that if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus. We need to come immediately. Get it right fast. Because the enemy will play on us to get going on us more. It will get on us more and more and start bombarding us with all these thoughts. And the thoughts that he's going to put there are, are your old ways. Your old ways. Your old thoughts he's going to put there. And you're going to be bombarded with it. And you're going to say, oh, I can't help it. And usually the ones that are getting bombarded and can't help it are the ones that have no backbone. Spineless. That's not what God created. That's not what God created. I, I, I lived there before. Years ago, I lived there. I used to come down on myself, too. So when I would sin, I'd come down on myself. I'd beat myself all up. And then finally, okay, God, I'm sorry. I repent. I mean, I did that over and over and over until I got sick and tired of it. I got sick and tired of me doing that. <laughs> You know, see, when we keep doing it, it's because we're really not sick and tired, but because we have a desire that's still there, and we're still feeding it with what comes to our minds, and we still feed that desire, and that desire just overrises. Oh, I can't help it. I just can't help it. Well, sure, you've been feeding it, and you've allowed, allowed it to come to your head, because now it's, it's, going, it's going and reattaching itself to how you used to think before, and then you go right back to how you thought, and you go, you, you go back like a dog that goes to his vomit, and he laps up this vomit. How's that taste? <laughs> you 
try to do that when you go throw one up I know this is, I know this is disgusting but you know we need to get disgusted to wake up you know that, that you go throwing up and after you're throwing up and all that all that garbage there and you go and say huh I think I'll go back and lap that right back up again <laughs> I hope I ruined your lunch. <laughs> but really, I almost have to be graphic like that in order to wake up the human mind. You know, because we are, without Christ, we are ignorant. Our society, intelligent people, university students, the decisions they're making are ignorant. Ignorant. Common sense will be able to see better than that. But it's because they're being dictated and corrupted with what is in the heart. And it's desperately wicked. Who can know it? Even the person that's doing it doesn't know from the next day to the next. They go and they say, they pass a certain law and they go, oh shoot, that our law offset this. So they go pass another law for that and they, oh, and mess this up. And it gets everything out of balance. Wow, really. I never dreamed that we get to the point. I know when they start, started bringing up abortions, we got to the point and it started, I think it was what, in the 60s? You know, because, you know, 60s, I was raised there in rebellious age, rebellious uh, uh, decade of the 60s. Do what I want to do. I, I free sex. It's all about peace. Let's have sex. It's about peace. It's free. Cost them, too. Cost America. Right? And now we're having to live with it, and they, and they started having children that they really didn't want. So let's try to find a way out of this so we can continue with our lifestyle. And they went, and they started passing laws. And they started passing some more laws. And now we're at the place where it doesn't get better. I've always warned you, it gets worse. Now they're passed a law for nine months. If you don't want the baby, let's kill it. Really? It's not life. Not life until it's born. Then even then, you might consider it. I mean, they're getting there more and more. And Christians? What happened to the Christian? Where's the church? Where's the church? Fighting with one another. Divided with one another. I don't know. Uh, I believe you. I believe you baptize in immersion. You baptize in sprinkling. You, uh, I don't believe that we. we wherever, uh, tongues is for everybody. I, I believe that tongues is not for no, nobody. I believe tongues is of the devil. I believe the gifts of the spirit. You know, it's not for. It, it's not for today. It was needed only when the when the, the last disciple died and stuff. It needed to get the church started. Well, you know, guess what? We need that. We need it more so to keep the church going. Do you agree with me? We need everything that is available for us. When, they, when you have Christians that are divided and we're fighting amongst ourselves and the world's passing all these laws and then we turn around and look and go, wow, how did that happen? Well, duh. You know, we're more concentrated on doctrine instead of concentrating on getting a hold of Jesus, the head of the church. And Jesus will let us know by the Spirit, because He gave us the Holy Spirit. And He says, guess what? All, everything that my, my Word has said here, it's all for you. It's all yours. Somebody lied and said, well, tongues are not for everybody. Well, somebody just lied. And guess what? It was a Christian that lied. Oh, yeah, but tongues needs interpretation. Not prayer tongues. We're going to do that on Thursdays. You pray, you're praying in the Spirit. You're praying. You're praying. Now, if somebody blurts out and starts uh, praying in tongues, speaking in tongues, well, then it needs an interpreter. Oh, there's two different things? Yeah. <laughs> The Holy Spirit would have a little showed us that if we looked at 1 Corinthians 14. But instead we listened to somebody 
you know, somebody says, well, it's not for today, or it's not for everybody. And then, you know what? We, took, we hear it over and over again. He said, oh, yeah, that's right. So then when somebody comes in, and so, Bakasha Tala Masoya, he said, ah, what are you doing? That, that's not for right now. Really? Who told you? Well, I heard that. How about reading your Bible? Maybe the Holy Spirit will give you insight. Because they, they reasoned it all out. They reasoned it out. Because it looks like somebody got it and some other didn't. So it's not for everybody. That's reasoning. That's not spirit. That's reasoning. See, so that tells me this. Because the Bible calls it gift. Are you hearing? It's a gift. So that means this. You get tongues, brother. Sister, you get nothing. You get tongues. You get nothing. You gotta get ready for it, girl. <laughs> she got saved just last Sunday. Glory be to God. Gloriously slave. God doesn't pick and choose. He's no respecter of persons. What he does for one, he does for all. Amen. According to my Bible. So what we need to do is get our minds renewed and get all that indoctrination that we received. Because a lot of our Christian churches are very quiet towards the gifts of the Spirit. They don't allow them. They don't have them because it might offend. As a result, we have so many Christians that are bound up. They come to church bound and they leave bound. Huh? They come sick and they leave sick and diseased. Where else are you going to go? Well, we'll go to the world. They'll give, give me some antibiotics and they'll give me this and they'll give me that and all that. You know, uh, and, Wow, really? What you just told God, you can't do it. You just told him that. But then we come to church, oh, he is Lord. He is awesome. Yeah, he's got good. Yeah, he's good. He's, can he heal all things? Yeah. You're lying to yourself because you really don't believe it. Because you're in a setting where, yeah, let's get all pumped up. God is good. Yeah. Say Jesus, Jesus. But do you, do you believe the power of that name? See, we need to get real with ourselves. See, and, and this is the way God ministers to me and through me. Because that's how God does in my own personal life. He meddles in my life. He meddles with me. See, so therefore, the things I speak is the things I believe. And something I'm not sure with, I'm going to hold back and get some more insight and some more revelation from the Spirit of God. But a lot of, all the things that I put out there, I believe it. Yeah, but what if it's not happening and stuff? I still believe it. See, because I'm not caught in time like this natural world is caught in time. When's God going to do it? One day God's going to do it. You know, someday God's going to do it. No, He's not. Because you're talking out of this kingdom instead of the kingdom that God has called us to become partake, partakers of his kingdom. In this kingdom, see, this, that kingdom is full of fear. This kingdom is full of faith. Faith knows no time. That's why now, now faith is. So when is he healed? Now. Okay, so then when you go off, it's, oh, I don't feel healed. Now you just went back to the, this world, the, the kingdom of this age, the fallen nature. What is that? I, I think I feel. I, 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 you know, I got to go by my senses. I got to hear it. I got to feel it. I got to see it. I got to taste it. I got to smell it before I believe it. Faith is not asking for that. Faith doesn't look for that. Faith just believes. Amen. If we would just get this word, just believe it. God, if I, and if you don't, Holy Spirit, help my unbelief. Amen. And just get in there and do it. And don't stand back and just wait. Well, God, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. No, no, no. Just get in there with faith and read it and read it and meditate on it. Yeah. Until it becomes faith. 
So that when you start, when you go to believe and you're praying and you're believing God, you're lo looking at it and says, no now. And the devil comes back and says, no, I'll be later on maybe. No, 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 now. See, that's standing against the wiles of the devil. Man, I'm giving you spiritual insight to wake you up to become more powerful instead of what they call pitiful. <laughs> we got a lot of pitiful Christians today. That if I wasn't a Christian, I wouldn't want to be a Christian. Wow. Really, I'm telling you the truth. Amen. And I've seen it. It's like, God, I don't want their Christian. And that's probably the reason why when I was 16 years old, I no longer went to church. I was still under the roof of my parents, but somehow I just got out of that. And I went to party scene. And I went there. Hey, that's more fun. Because the religion that I was under, it was, it was, that we grew up under, it, 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 there was no fun to it. So I got out there. It was fun. <laughs> Now all of a sudden you guys that were out there, now you're giving me those holy eyes <laughs> as if you never thought it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. But it was fun for this kingdom and it was only temporary. And it was, it was going to take away from your life instead of add to it. So it never got me out of my thinking of low self-esteem and all the rejection that I had and all the love that I didn't receive. I didn't, I, I, so I went looking in places to try to get that. I wasn't getting it. But you were raised in a Christian home. Yet they have that kind of love. No, they didn't have it together. I love my parents today, but they didn't have it together. They had church together. They went to church. When they came home, it wasn't church. It was total dysfunction. I don't recall ever hearing the word love. I don't. If I could try, maybe it did, but it doesn't stick in my mind. It wasn't there. It was not easy. Even when you raise children and say, oh, I love you, I love you. I see parents today, that's great when you do that. Do it, feed it to them. But the thing is, now you can become, you've got to become the lover. You see, that's what caused, caused me to become the lover. I expect it out of her. When I went after other women, I wanted that love from them and it disappointed me because they, they saw that as a weakness in me. And they took advantage of that. Did it, got it from her, tried to get it, tried to get it. It caused more conflict. More conflict. We're Christians. Years, 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 years. I'm going to tell you. I'll tell you a secret. It's not going to take you this long. It just took me because maybe I'm more stubborn than you are. But it took me 25 years, 27 years, to finally get it. Now, in those years, I was a per preacher. So, when God got a hold of me and began to pour His love into me, I was broken. I mean, I'm telling you, I was desperate. And when I became desperate, that's when God poured His love. I, was I received an experiential, not only the knowledge, but the experience of the love of God poured into me like it never did. And it poured for months that way. I'm telling you, I had to pull over on my car because God's presence would, oh, would... Amen. Man, would I can, ooh, I can feel it now. Would saturate me. I'd go and I'd, I had to go to get a job and got a job. And my lunch break, I'd go in the car and I'd, I'd, his presence would come on me. His love was coming on me. And I told her, you know what, I, don't, I didn't expect anything from her. I don't care if you didn't give me, love me back or nothing. I didn't care. I don't want you to leave me. But if you did, I understand. But I told her, I says, I'm not expecting it from you. I'm getting it already. Yeah. I, I was, that love was just pouring. And, but in turn, it was overflowing. See? When it overflowed, she got it. She got some more. She got some more. And overflowed, got some more. Guess where I live now? I live in an overflowing stage. Sometimes she has to say, okay, back off, you know. You know, because that's where I'm at. I, I'm flowing, I'm flowing. And I love it. I love it. Now, do I expect her to be... No. It's okay. It's all right. Whatever you do, whatever you give, it's okay. I'm fine. I'm excited. 
See, now what am I doing? I am partaking of God's kingdom now. That in 1998 is when it happened. That is what turned my whole life around and has been turned around ever since. I have a walk with God I never dreamed possible. That's the reason why when I tell you the things that God has gives you peace, it gives you joy in the midst of the struggles. And it doesn't mean it happened overnight. It just, I started moving in that path to begin to receive it. But see, this is what has to happen. This is what you don't, you don't, you may not like. You gotta die. I thought you didn't like it, yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect a whole lot of, you know, praise the Lord, yeah, I'm going to die. <laughs> what I mean by dying is that your flesh has got to die. So when you lived, you lived where it was, where it was uh, 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 feeling, uh, hearing, seeing, tasting, touching. You can't live that way no more. You can't live no more. No more. This is what God showed me. He's been putting these things in my spirit. I didn't write them down. Put it in my spirit. And, and he's been revealing these things to me. That's why God talks to me. He just talks to me. Whatever I'm doing, he just ministers to my heart. And he says, if my people would just die, they can receive all my promises. Amen. Because my promises have said, in 2 Corinthians, he goes, my promises have said, all the promises of God are yes and amen. And see, oftentimes the reason why we don't receive it is because what stands in the way is our disobedience and our resistance of wanting to still live the way I've always lived. <laughs> huh? So that is one of the things I believe has created denominations today. Barriers. Now I believe all the barriers need to come down. I mean, my grandma said years ago, she was, uh, before she passed away, she was a prayer warrior. She died at 91 years old. She was a prayer, prayer person. Pray, pray, pray. And she told me, she told me all, because she only spoke Spanish, but she had told me, she goes, you know, there's coming a day. How does she know all this? There's coming a day that all the denominational barriers need to all come down. So we become one like that. This is so true. It's so true. Because Ephesians 4 says it, says that until we all come into the unity of the faith into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Fullness of Christ can only happen through harmony, unity. Now, is all the church going to do it? No. I'm just blunt. Not all the church is going to do it. Not all the Christian church is going to do it. Because why? A lot of them still like to live the way they want to live in this kingdom. And say they're Christians. I'm a Christian. I go to church. You know, I read the Bible. It's like you're giving God a break. Oh, I read your Bible. I, be, I read your word. You know, I pray. I do my devotions and stuff. Uh, I'm okay. I'm all right. And never... Now, think about this. Jesus, when he went to the cross, he didn't say, uh, you know, let me just go part way into it. You know, don't, don't whip me that much. You know, just, just hold back. Instead of 40, what was it, 40, 39, 39 stripes? Instead of that, how about give me half that? You know? I, don't, don't tear my beard. Just, you know, I, I still, I, I want to look good still. You know? Go to the cross. Carry, get ready to carry the cross. Here, let me put it on that other person. Let me get it, put it on him. Okay, let's go. Okay. All right. Going up to the cross to go die. And he goes, here. No, don't put the nails in there. Just put the ropes. Make it look like it. Make it look like it. I didn't plan to say all this. This is coming out this way. Make it look like it. 
That is the way Christians, no, I would, let me give you a conservative uh, figure, a percentage, probably about 90 plus percent Christians live that way. Yeah, it's sad. They have the ropes, they're not tied, they're tied to the cross, they're not nailed to the cross. See, the tying to the cross means you still got breath in your body. You're still living. Boy, I never thought of saying all this, I'm telling you. Wow, I never thought about that. But see, Jesus. <laughs> when I think about it, wow. He nailed. He was nailed to the cross. To die. Full 39 stripes, back ripped open, meat showing, bones showing. Wow. He goes to the cross for me. What am I going to go and say, okay, Jesus says, no, carry your cross. If you're going to follow me, take up your cross. But he said this, deny yourself up your cross and then you can follow me imitate that means this put the nails in there kill my flesh kill my flesh when we, the flesh is killed life is released Amen. come on give him praise yes life is released that's what God showed me through this week. He was showing me that. He goes, if you just truly die, if my people would just die, then they will experience the true life of what I've said in my word. What I've said in my word was, I've said I've given you life and I give it to you more abundantly. That's what Jesus did for us. So I'm challenging you today. Let him bring the nails out and let him nail you on the cross of your flesh. Get rid of the ropes. It's not doing in you any good whatsoever. That you're trying to live this life and then you're trying to live the God life. That is the most miserable place to live. God called us to live a total, total Christian life that's committed and totally surrendered. That means they will live. There's no sacrifice too big that you cannot do. No sacrifice too big. Because it is worth it. I am there. I am walking that path. I am teaching. I am preaching these things. You follow. Follow along. This is the path that I'm going. A lot of people don't want to live this way. These, these seats were told to be packed out if people wanted to live that way. But most people do not want to live that way. Oftentimes they go to mega churches where they can hide out. No accountability whatsoever. They come and go. They sneak in and they sneak out. No accountability. And so now you have many preachers that look at it as, as long as I have a warm body, it makes me, it feeds my ego, it makes me look good. How many people, it used to be, when I used to, I don't go, there are a lot of pastors, gatherings together. How many people got in your church? How many people got in your church? How many people got in your church? It's like, wow, people become numbers instead of souls. I was like, what is all that about? Because it makes them look good. I don't care. I'm not here to make me look good whatsoever. I don't care. I really don't. All I care. All I care is that he looks good. That's all. My love for him just keeps growing more and more. 
if you had asked me to go watch, look at the Passion of the Christ, Passion of, what is that? Passion of the Christ. Passion of the Christ. I probably could, would not watch it again. I've I only seen it one time. But the, the love that's growing inside of me, it'd be hard. I, I couldn't see it no more. I couldn't see it because that's just not that that's not just a, a movie that actually happened for me for you and I'm gonna give him part of my life that's an insult why not give it all that's the one that he's worthy of He's worthy of my life to present my body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto Him. That's my reasonable service to Him. I feel like that's not even enough, but that's all I got. Just myself. Bow your heads.